please prepare for the entrance of the color guard. Thank you for standing for the National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Professor Angelina Shumway. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. flag was still there. Oh, say the stars star spangled better yet wave. Oh, the land of free and the With liberty, justice for all. Please be seated. The Ushers. welcoming Mr. Sidney Gibson, Chairman of the Prince George's Community College Board of Trustees. Greetings, President Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty and staff, students, honored guests, family members, and members of the community. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the investiture of Dr. Felicia D. Williams as the ninth president of Prince George's Community College. This is an exciting time for both the college and the community. Also, we acknowledge her stellar leadership in this time of change in higher education. Today, we honor the past and celebrate the future of a college poised on the brink of world recognition a recognition that would not be possible without the of efforts of many, some who are gathered here today. Thank you for all you have done and for all you shall do. Eight former presidents shaped and guided this institution, which has brought us to this moment. While we are still on the chartered course towards greatness, but the person at the helm has changed. We are still headed for greatness, our destiny as an institution of higher learning that demands academic excellence supports the intellectual vibrancy of the faculty, is committed to the success of our students and the uplifting of our community. We shall leverage technological advancements across programs and services and economic status. Our bold course will educate students both within and beyond our physical borders. Joining us to honor the college and Dr. Williams are a number of honored guests, some of whom have joined us on the platform. Please hold your applause until while 
and please hold your applause while those in the audience are introduced. I'm sure all our honored guests will be <laughs> recognized a little bit later, maybe after I'm done. All right. There are many in the audience today representing the corporate, private, government, and nonprofit sectors who through the years have been steadfast in their support of the college. Your presence signifies a lasting commitment to higher education and impactful skill enhancement. We appreciate and acknowledge your support and commitment. Please join me in expression of appreciation for your presence and your commitment. Now to bring greetings from Maryland, Prince George's County, colleges and universities and Prince George's Community College are a number of special guests. Bringing greetings from Prince George's County is the Honorable Angela D. Alsobrooks. From, from the Maryland State Senate, the Honorable Melanie G. Griffith. And from the Prince George's County Council, the Honorable Calvin S. Hawkins II. They will bring greetings in that honor. Good morning, everyone. They call that the voice of God, this voice that comes up, not quite as precise as God, but we'll, we'll take it this morning. But it really is a, such an honor uh, to have a chance to be here this morning to celebrate a woman who came to Prince George's County quite literally in the middle of a global pandemic. And I have to tell you that um, it didn't take long to be in the presence of Dr. Williams before you could feel her dignity, her grace. Uh, I came to understand right away that we had before us someone who was so special, uh, a woman of deep faith and deep intellect. And so it is such an honor uh, to be here with so many other leaders from our county this morning to formally welcome, after two years, Dr. Felicia Williams into her role as president of Prince George's County Community College. Uh, yes. But before we go on, I also would like to thank our former president, who is also my dear friend, Dr. Charlene Dukes, for her service to this institution. When she became president, she joined a short list of influential leaders who have helped Prince George's Community College grow into the premier institution that it is today. Another name on that list who is, who is worthy of mentioning is President Robert Bickford, who as he was sometimes called, Bick. Bick led Prince George's Community College for 27 years. And during his tenure, the college expanded from a night school program at Suitland High School. Bick joined the community college as a golf coach while he taught at Suitland, eventually becoming dean of the evening and summer school division when the college moved to his campus in Largo. He helped to expand Prince George's Community College into one of the leading community colleges in the nation. Enrollment more than tripled, six buildings were constructed, and President Bickford is still, to this day, the longest serving president of the Prince George's Community College. At the time of his retirement, Bick said, community college gives everyone a chance. I've touched so many lives. Just seeing friends and having them pay tribute and say thank you makes you feel pretty darn good. And even though we lost Bick this summer, his legacy lives on in the halls of Prince George's Community College. His devotion to education has made a permanent imprint in the lives of the students he touched. And his work, along with all the deans, all the staff, all of the professors and students has made Prince George's Community College an accessible place for every student to shape their future. If Vic were here today, he would be so proud to see Dr. Felicia Williams formally inaugurated as president of this college, 
because Dr. Williams stands for the same things that he stood for. When it comes to education, Dr. Williams stands for accessibility, she stands for diversity, and she stands for using the best information available to help students lead. During her time with Valencia College in Orlando, Dr. Williams provided academic, administrative, and fiscal leadership to support the mission of Valencia College to transform lives, strengthen community, and inspire individuals to excellence. Dr. Williams is more than a successful educator. She's a visionary leader known for data-driven solutions to issues in higher education. At Valencia, Dr. Williams launched a summer bridge program that resulted in a 97% course rate of success, an enormous improvement compared to traditional enrollment. Dr. Williams is also extremely skilled at sharing her vision. At Valencia, she successfully worked with community leaders to raise funds for programs at the college on a transformative scale. The Orlando Business Journal named Dr. Williams among the top five leaders for economic development. I'm proud to be here as we formally embark on this new era at Prince George's Community College. Dr. Williams will help further the important goals of this institution, providing affordable, high quality learning that supports equity in our community. Or as Bick might have said, Dr. Williams wants to make sure that Prince George's Community College gives everybody a chance at a quality education. Dr. Williams' dedication to education is part of the fabric of Prince George's Community College, and her skills are tailor-made to take this community proudly into the future. So let me once again congratulate President Felicia Williams we are so Prince George's proud to formally welcome you to Prince George's College. And may, may God continue to bless you, Dr. Williams, and may God continue to bless this amazing institution. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am extremely honored to be here this morning to share in this important, important occasion. I am Melanie Griffith and I'm President Pro Tem of the Maryland State Senate. And I'm here on behalf of my colleagues in the Maryland General Assembly, first of all, welcoming you to the 25th Legislative District of Prince George's County. <laughs> Had to get that in, Madam County Exec. <laughs> We're very proud of Prince George's Community College. It is a jewel and a true asset in Prince George's County and the state of Maryland, as are our many community colleges. And I joined with the Board of Trustees and the students, the faculty and staff, and all of the elected officials and community members who celebrate the arrival of Dr. Felicia Williams a few years ago. We are so glad you're here, ma'am. I have to tell you, I, like the county executive and many others, enjoy a, a very close friendship with Dr. Charlene Dukes. And so when Dr. Williams arrived, she had a very tough job, and that is integrating herself into a community that loves her predecessor. <laughs> but she did it. She arrived with boldness and sweetness. She has a sweet spirit. And she's also a very strong voice on behalf of Prince George's Community College. She is not shy, for those of you that don't know, about asking for resources from the state of Maryland, Brad, <laughs> on behalf of Prince George's Community College. And so today, I'm here to celebrate the arrival, albeit a bit late, of an extraordinary leader who's accomplished. You heard some of her credentials our county executive just shared. You're gonna hear words from our colleague on the county council, and I shared with Dr. Williams that the county executive, the council chair, and I came together and had a meeting, and the colleagues on the council know this, we agreed that if we were unapologetically united, we would be unstoppable as a county. And so that is what we're doing on this county's behalf. Now, Dr. Williams, for those of you that have been introduced to her, you know that she's never met a stranger. 
She becomes very fast friends. I introduced her to my son, and they went on and had a conversation while I sat on the sidelines and watched them bond because she's just so genuinely kind and easy to relate to. She asks with a smile like any distinguished leader would. She offers a transformative learning experience to our students. And so I asked myself, what do you get when you combine unlimited vision with strategy and style? President Dr. Felicia Williams. God bless you. Good morning. It is, an, it is indeed a privilege to join with you for this exciting moment in the history of this institution, the inauguration of the ninth president of Prince George's Community College, the Honorable Dr. Felicia D. Williams. Doc, if I may say, this morning, while sitting in there waiting your arrival, arrival with my colleagues, I often wonder what happens at an institution of higher learning. And yes, I can hear from you and your administrators and your professors, but it's important to know what the students say. And I had a chance to talk to this very talkative, <laughs> outgoing student to the Board of Trustees, Sade Davis, County Council Member Vice Chair Sidney Harrison and I listened to her talk about you, and if that were not enough, it was this precocious 12th grader that's matriculating here at your university, at your college rather, who serves as the president of the student government. Shadisha Sahi, precocious as she is, she also shared why you and your team are such a dynamic group. And if that were not enough, I saw a group of individuals come in and as you were moving around the room, you just had a smile that was so bright, sunshine and all this inclement weather we've had. <laughs> and, and I realized it was your family and I knew then we have the right person leading Prince George's Community College. College. I bring you warm greetings on behalf of my colleagues on the Prince George's County Council, Chair Gibson and the Board of Trustees for Prince George's Community College. What a phenomenal ninth community college president you have chosen. With over 25 years of progressive leadership, experience, fiscal prudence, and administrative responsibility in higher education, Dr. Williams is the right person at the right time in the right place. And like my predecessors, I'm a big Charlene Dukes fan, but I'm sure if I see Charlene Dukes today or in, a day, in the days to come, she will give me a thumbs up and wink her eye and say, you got a bad sister following me. <laughs> unique individual, Dr. Williams, because as most of us know, you were announced the new president at this community college in June of 2020 at the height of a global pandemic we refer to as COVID-19. While the county exec, my colleagues, our state and federal representatives were responding, you had to come in here and lead us through it. Thank you for an awesome job and thank you for the leadership you demonstrated. In closing, <laughs> in closing, I want you to know Dr. Williams hit the ground running and has not stopped. From that time until now, she has affirmed that she is indeed a transformational servant leader, a strong community builder, and a fighter for education in this institution of higher learning. Through your very difficult times, Dr. Williams, you have continued to effectively lead this institution with grace, strength, and ferocious 
to nasty. As we move toward brighter days, I have no doubt under your leadership, the journey ahead will continue to be rich in progress and bright in promise. It has been said that leaders establish a vision for the future and set a strategy for getting there. They motivate and inspire others to go in the right direction, and they, along with everyone else, sacrifice to get there. Dr. Williams, on behalf of my colleagues on the council and of close to a million citizens that make up Prince George's County, thank you for your vision. You serve as a motivating force and an inspiration for us all, while empowering each of us who share an unrelenting commitment as Senator Melanie Griffith shared to our community and the community college to play an active role in its progress. Congratulations to you and to Prince George's Community College for all you have accomplished. It is my honor and privilege on behalf of my colleagues to participate in this auspicious occasion. May the legacy of excellence and lifetime of learning at Prince George's Community College continue to flourish under your leadership. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you as you serve as our. To bring greetings on behalf of the 16 sister community colleges in the state of Maryland, please welcome Dr. Brad Phillips, Executive Director of the Maryland Association of Community Colleges. Good afternoon or morning still, I guess, excuse me. Some acts are just hard to follow, so. Um, but greetings, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here today to bring uh, you greetings from the Maryland Association of Community Colleges. And I also want to acknowledge that there are several presidents here in attendance today, two of which will also be having inaugurations later this month. And if I've missed anybody, please let me know. But we have Dr. Bambera from the Allegheny College of Maryland. We have Dr. Williams from Montgomery College. We have, uh, representing the new president at Frederick, Dr. Hawkins uh, from Frederick Community College, Dr. Murphy from the College of Southern Maryland, and also um, Dr. Hoy from Warwick, and did I mention Dr. Willis from Howard Community College? She snuck in before I could get her name on my list. But let me start by congratulating the Prince George's community and the college board of trustees on the selection of Dr. Felicia Williams as the ninth president of Prince George's Community College. Like many colleges in Maryland, Prince George's Community College began offering classes in a local high school 64 years ago in 1958. Much has changed. The college now offers over 200 academic and career training programs in 20 facilities, one as beautiful as this compared to uh, 64 years ago, but they also cover over a million square feet. Um, from the first class of 185 students to an enrollment now well over 45,000 students. Um, very impressive. But I also get to speak today from the honor of already having seen Dr. Williams' dedication and dynamic leadership as, the, as she's navigated this college through some of the most challenging years of those 2064 uh, caused by the pandemic. I have the privilege of working with every community college over the past 14 years, and on behalf of the President's Council, I can say affirmatively that the skills Dr. Williams brings to this presidency will not only help this college, but every community college in Maryland, as we just heard Dr., um, from Dr. Um, Senator Griffith, that she's already very capable of asking for resources, so that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Uh, the next few years, though, will be a seismic shift for Maryland as we recover and rebuild from the detrimental impacts of the pandemic. And our state's economic needs will require community colleges to play the leading role in providing educational opportunities for students of all ages. Having a mission-focused, student-centered president is critical, not just because our state, for our state to produce graduates needed for Maryland's emerging economy, but because we must do so in a manner that corrects the racial inequities and reverse achievement and employment gaps. Prince George's Community College enrolls more African-American students than any other college in the state. This college has a long history, as we've already heard, of offering economic opportunities and prosperity to those that seek it. It is simply one of the best tools the state and the county has for generating social and economic mobility. 
According to research done by the National Bureau of Ed Economic Research, the true mobility champions of higher education are the colleges that both accept all students, especially low-income students, and send them into the upper quintile of earnings at relatively high rates. In one of the most comprehensive studies ever conducted on college graduates, researchers considered 30 million students between 1999 and 2014 and compared their parents' incomes to students' own post-college earnings and did so by school they, that they had attended. With, the, with these data, they could see exactly which colleges helped the most students rise from the bottom of the earnings ladder to the top. When these data are compiled for Maryland, Prince George's Community College is ranked third on the overall mobility index. I will just add that that is um, above the other elite flagship institution in the county, as well as a global research institution in Baltimore City. <laughs> And that is why it's a pleasure to attend today's inauguration, because I know Dr. Williams is the right person to continue this work. On behalf of the Maryland Association of Community Colleges, we wish you, Dr. Williams, the best as you lead Prince George's and his fantastic faculty and staff as the ninth president. Thank you very much. Greetings will now be brought by Rosie Allen Herring, President and Chief Executive Officer of the United Way of the National Capital Area. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Chairman, a pleasure to be with you and members of the Board of Trustees, to our County Executive, our County Council Chair, and of course, the head of our state delegation, to all of you, the leaders in Prince George's County, family, and all distinguished guests. It is indeed an auspicious occasion. Thank you for the opportunity to simply celebrate this wonderful moment in the history of a national and local treasure, Prince George's Community College. This is also a day where we celebrate phenomenal leadership and the future trajectory of this phenomenal institution. President Williams came to us, yes, in the midst of a pandemic, but she brought a cool breeze with her. <laughs> she brought her vast knowledge, her academic excellence, and she brought her heart to Prince George's County, Maryland. During my time with President Williams, I have come to appreciate not only and value her high intelligence, but her experience as an educator and her ministry of serving others. Today I speak with multiple hats. I happen to be a member of the search committee when we found this phenomenal treasure and brought her to Prince George's Community College. I've had the privilege of serving as a member of the county of the college's foundation board of directors. I certainly come as a proud partner as the Chief Executive Officer of your United Way of the National Capital Area, but also I come with some other hats too. As a proud member and the Eastern Regional Director for our beloved sisterhood, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, you know we had to get that in there, and the Lynx Incorporated. So with all of those hats that we did not know we had in common, it really affirms that we've made the right decision. Again, as a member of the search committee, we remain proud, and I know I see so many of our search committee members here with us. We remain proud of this selection. We knew we were getting an academic scholar who has implemented best practices. We also know that we've received someone with vision, who is fierce, determined, caring, erudite, and also simply humble. As a member of the Foundation's Board of Directors, the work of the college is critical, but its brand continues to flourish. Like so many others, we have a long-standing partnership at United Way with Prince George's Community College. And yes, like many in here, we also love and adore Dr. Charlene Dukes. But as a partner, what Dr. Williams has been able to do is continue what was started years ago in bringing not only the best thought leadership to the table around many of the toughest challenges that are facing our region, but she also has brought 
a now uh, an increased and a continuing brand presence for this college. The partnership with your United Way contribute, contributes toward impacting those who simply need us to bring our best to the table. We are indeed in partnership and in service with you, with this community. Now, as a soror and a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, we are proud to welcome you from the dynamic southern region of Orlando to the dynamic and historic region of the eastern region of Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> Dr. Williams, thank you for bringing your talents to Prince George's Community College. It's a match that is necessary, needed, and a blessing. Prince George's Community College offers hope, opportunity, and the ability to thrive for our residents, our families, and our neighbors. President Williams, I look forward to continuing to partner with you and your phenomenal team as you chart the trajectory of one of our most critical national and regional treasures. As a minister, I know as a servant leader, you know my favorite scripture is Micah 6, 8, and it simply asks, what does the Lord require of you? It is to do justice, to love with kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. You have already made the difference. We are just a little bit late welcoming you, but better late than never. You have made the difference. We are so proud to welcome you because we know for Prince George's Community College, the best is yet to come. Thank you. One of the mainstays of any institution of higher education is its faculty, their intellect, their expertise in the various disciplines, and their commitment to learning have been key in the growth of Prince George's Community College. On behalf of the faculty, I present Ms. Marcia Dawson, president of the faculty organization. Dr. Williams, President Williams, as the president of the faculty organization, I bring you warm greetings on behalf of all the faculty at Prince George's Community College. From Chesapeake Hall to this Center for Performing Arts, to the Center for Advanced Technology, to all of our extension centers, from those in every academic area, arts, humanities, mathematics, health sciences, professional studies, technology, and community education. From those who have been here through many years to those who, who this semester are beginning their tenure with us, we offer a hearty welcome. As educators, scholars, and members of this college community, we admire your vision and have appreciated your steadfast leadership and strength of character through the monumental shifts and evolutions of the past two years as we have navigated the challenges with which we were faced and emerged stronger in so many ways. You share our commitment to the success of our students, who are the reason that we all dedicate our time and our energies to this profession and to this institution specifically. We, to mix a motto of the faculty and a metaphor of yours, we the faculty are looking forward together with you to building a truly spectacular house of tomorrow. Congratulations on your inauguration as the ninth president of Prince George's Community College, and may we all, in partnership, enjoy many successes in the years to come. Thank you. Leadership at any college evolves in a variety of ways and is often manifested within the employees who, like the faculty, have dedicated themselves to their respective areas of management and support to help students realize their goals. Please welcome Dr. Keith Mervin, President of the Administrative and Professional Staff Organization, followed by Ms. Leslie Harris, President of the Technical and Support Staff Organization.
Good morning. Good morning, Chair Gibson, Vice Chair Stone, the Board of Trustees, Dr. Williams, distinguished guests, family, and the college community. It's with great pleasure I bring you greetings on behalf of the Administrative Professional Staff Organization, the Executive Committee, and the General Body. The APSO congratulates Dr. Felicia D. Williams on being named the ninth president of Prince George's Community College. We are so happy to have you and your family here in the great state of Maryland and Prince George's County. You've said we should look back for a moment and then look forward. We have looked back on where we've come and are now looking forward to and are committed to work with you to realize your strong vision for Prince George's Community College. We wish you great success, health, and thrive as we embark on this great journey. Congratulations, and may God continue to bless you and the college community. Thank you. Good morning. To the Board of Trustees and all the distinguished guests, and especially to you, Dr. Williams, we welcome you all today to, um, and on behalf of the Technical and Support Staff Organization, welcome to the inauguration of our ninth president, Dr. Felicia Williams. We are glad you are here, and thank you for taking time to join our celebration. Dr. Williams, I congratulate you, and I know that you understand servant leadership because you are also a reverend charged with the care of souls. And as one seminary professor told me, it is all ministry. Whether you are in church or on the job, the care of souls is the same. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for your willingness to serve our institution and lead us into a bright future. We appreciate the opportunity we have had to work with you and look forward to our future engagement in the leadership and care of souls at Prince George's Community College. The vision and mission of this college rests with the students who choose to enter our doors. It is through their perseverance and attainment of student goals that we claim our success. The president of the Student Governance Board, Ms. Sadiksha Shahi, will bring greetings on behalf of the student body. Greetings to our students, administrators, staff, and faculty. faculty. Um, I wholeheartedly welcome you today to the inauguration that is being held for our wonderful president of Prince George's Community College, Dr. Felicia D. Williams. Throughout my experience as the student governance president thus far, I've been treated with nothing but warm smiles and an amicable demeanor from President Williams. I'm extremely thrilled to gain this opportunity to take part in this event, and I'm greatly appreciative of all the opportunities as a whole that SGA has granted me. The pandemic undoubtedly struck the impacts and traditions of Prince George's Community College, but the constant efforts of all of our members, including President Williams, has remained unfaltered and firm. I wish for President Williams' term at PGCC to be filled with great prosperity and life-changing advancements. From the finance of our students to the availability of, ut of utilities in every building on campus, our president knows it all. <laughs> <laughs> president Williams, hello. <laughs> I'm extremely honored to be able to work with you and all the other motivated hard workers of our community. Once again, I wish you tremendous luck in all your future endeavors, and I'm confident that PGCC will remain in good hands for a grand period of time with your steadfast attentiveness and dedication. I admire, I admire your leadership, consistent positive attitude, and a will to change people's lives for the better. Thank you to you all for attending such a memorable event today. Have a great rest of the day, and furthermore, a significant year led by the ninth president of Prince Joyce Community College, President Williams. Thank you. Congratulations. 
Thank you all very much for those words of support and encouragement and for sharing with us on this special occasion. Please welcome back to the podium, Mr. Sidney Gibson, Chairman of the Prince George's Community College Board of Trustees. Thank you. I'll take two points of personal privilege first. Will all the members of the search committee please stand and be recognized? As you can see, I think they did a wonderful job. And now I will ask for the members of the inaugural committee also to stand and also can we give them a round of applause. Since its inception in 1958, our college has grown from a few classes taught to a few students by a few faculty members to one with five physical locations, award-winning faculty, and students who attend both in person and virtually. We have undergone a metamorphosis in our nearly 65 years of existence. Our college has prospered under the leadership and guidance of eight presidents who have prepared us for this unique opportunity. And in the year 2022, we continue our great tradition of distinguished and servant leaders by investing our ninth president, Dr. Felicia D. Williams, a proven transformational servant leader. Dr. Williams values learning as much as leading and understands the power of inspiring others to achieve positive outcomes. Dr. Williams joins us after nearly 22 years at Valencia College in Orlando, Florida. And of course, we all uh, send prayers and wishes to her family down in Florida at this time also. She brings a wealth of higher education experience to her role as a proven leader. She has what it takes to move our college and its many wonderful programs forward. Dr. Williams joined the college community during very challenging times and has been leading the college with her strength of character and grace. The college's bold new strategic plan, Dare to be Extraordinary. Positions the college, our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, our students to size the future. Under the leadership of Dr. Williams, our college is on the brink of a brighter tomorrow. Our reputation is growing within the county and the region, and we are building the future, one student, one initiative, and one program at a time. Dr. Williams arrives with a commitment to continue our outstanding educational legacy to take us from where we are to where we want to be. While leading us along this difficult journey, it is for her also a labor of love. She promises to never lose sight of why we exist, to educate and serve the needs of the residents of this county. We are an integral part of the economic engine of this county. Our desire impact is to help all students, those seeking degrees, a great start or a certificate or just something else. Because everybody's been to the Colony Arts Center, right? You want to go there. You want to be there. We will provide you an opportunity to enhance your economic status or your employment status. We serve you. I'd like to invite my colleague, Mr. Howard Stone, to join me to assist in the investiture of Dr. Felicia Williams as, as the ninth president. I'm also happy to announce that she has signed, the board has approved, and I have executed her contract extension. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chair, I did ask you to come here. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. While we met, wait on Trustee Stone to witness this auspicious occasion, Madam County Exec, Madam Senator, Council Chair, will you also join? Right behind me? Sit on. <laughs> As Dr. Williams comes, will you please come and join us? As she does, your president. Keep the main thing the main thing. Why we would need to do these Herculean things. Why we would need to put the desires of others, the goals and the aspirations of others ahead of our own. Our students. This place 
reaffirmed purpose. And it was significant. Then y'all came back. (laughs) And so too with the phenomenal demands of having everyone be back. I had to share. I had to become conscientious about the back door that I'd been using. I, I didn't know it was the back door. And people didn't want the president coming in through the back door. They wanted me to now use the front door of the building. People wanted me to now use my parking space rather than the visitor circle. It's been amazing. Over the past two years, I've become embedded in Prince George's Community College's mission for academic excellence and student success. Alongside you, I've observed, I've listened, I have engaged. I've learned the college's strengths and its areas for growth. And I stand before you today to declare that I have no regrets about choosing Prince George's Community College. I have no regrets. People continue to ask me, are you okay? (laughs) Do you like it? Do you miss your family? The answers are yes, yes, and yes. And I have no regrets. I'm in the right place. I'm meant to be here to lead this work at this time. And I know that the time that we have already spent together has helped to solidify that, not just for the college, but also for the broader community. I am not under any assumptions that the journey ahead will be easy. I began in a pandemic, but I'm confident that together, We certainly can and we will continue to excel. With your continued support, I am committed to doing all that is necessary in my power to lead Prince George's Community College forward into the greater levels of success and greater heights of promise that we all so desire. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? Prince George's Community College is the region's premier center for dynamic teaching and learning, strategic partnerships, and community engagement that advance knowledge, economic equity, and lifelong personal development. Here, students' lives are enriched and empowered through high-quality transformative learning experiences. Here, all who seek to learn have access to personal development and professional advancement that translate to economic prosperity. Before I share my vision for Prince George's Community College, I want to take a moment to celebrate the key successes that we have already enjoyed. After all, it's been two years. We've done some great work in this time. Allow me just to speak a bit about our people, our partnerships, and our programs. Let's begin with the people. The pandemic was complex. In the summer just prior to my arrival, this great faculty, this academy, had to shift from in-person teaching and learning to remote teaching and learning without a pause in the delivery of these services to our students. Would you give them a rousing round of applause? It's important to recognize that they too were experiencing the pandemic. In the midst of their own trauma, the midst of their own challenges, loss of family members, sickness and illness, They had to shift the learning. 
staff, employees. They had to adapt in-person service to virtual forms of service, learn new technologies, utilize new tools and resources. The innovation and the distribution of which have propelled us forward, in my estimation, seven to 10 years. It was not easy, but they too have achieved. Would you give the staff a rousing round of applause? We did it. We did it from the places of trauma and crisis. And now we move forward to refine it from the place of excellence around our outcomes. It was important for me in coming to the institution to spend some time understanding where we might go to understand the great vision of opportunity, and then to recognize that a team of people will be necessary in order for those aspirations to be realized. In the past two years, we have collectively assessed our leadership structure and what the college needs in order to advance as a high-performing institution. We have redesigned the composition of the executive team. We are in the midst, even now, of a phased reconfiguration in response to those findings. The senior team members now consist of a vice president for equity, culture, and talent, vice president for external affairs, communications, and advancement, and general counsel. Two new positions and roles that have been added and envisioned in the three, I'm sorry, envisioned in this time frame, two of which their first day will be on Monday. We are delighted to be able to add that to the team of individuals that you met coming in because we understand that we must pay attention to our external environments and we must build the talent that we have. We look at our faculty. They are germane to academia and instrumental to student success. Part-time faculty are a large contingent of our instructional rank. Over the past academic year, we have implemented a number of initiatives to better integrate part-time faculty and full-time faculty to ensure we have commensurate practices bridging gaps in areas where they may have existed. It is our responsibility to ensure that we value the contributions of all faculty. Our student success absolutely depends upon it. The challenges that we face as a college and as a community are too great for us to tackle alone. This is bigger than edu education, bigger than industry. It is bigger than government. In this season, it is necessary for us to embrace systemic approaches that allow us to leverage the talent and the resources across multiple agencies in order to realize what are the most highly prioritized goals of our community. We are connected in this work through the partnerships that we have established with our agencies, through the signature relationships we are creating with business and industry, through the pleading that I do with our elected officials to give us more money, <laughs> through the work that we're doing internally. Again, partnerships are our signature. Here are a few, just to give you some concrete examples. 2021, PGCC received more than $2.5 million of additional funding under the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund. Prince George's Community College was an awarded an additional amount of money because of a competitive grant based upon the student population that we, that we serve. We were so pleased to be the only institution in Maryland that received that additional funding. 
We have also dramatically grown our grant acquisitions. In three focal areas, we have been able to make substantive improvement even in, the, in these two years. We have created and launched a Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. We have improved access to resources related to course design. And we have expanded our dual enrollment offerings with an emphasis on making sure that these programs and courses are available to students who are in the southern part of the county. We are excited about the outcomes that we believe these partnerships will yield in the years ahead. Earlier this year, Prince George's Community College partnered with Bank of America in support of micro pathways. Grant funding from Bank of America is supporting our ongoing effort as one among six institutions selected nationally for the Education Design Lab's Community College Growth Engine Fund. The Community College Growth Engine Fund is a national effort designed to improve outcomes among underserved students. The pilot program, which launched in the spring of 2022, focuses on micro pathways in healthcare, information technology, and healthcare. PGCC has also recognized the barriers that our students face outside of the classroom, those that affect their ability to be successful within the classroom. The college's partnership with the American Heart Association demonstrates our focus on the whole student. In 2020, during the height of the pandemic, we hosted community food drives here on our campus. We also worked with families and residents that were in crisis. They were able to come by and to pick up food kits that contained fresh produce, protein, and other staples. Our partnership has expanded with the launch of the college's American Heart Association approved healthy cooking certificate program. Free tuition available to students who enrolled, was available to students who enrolled in the program during the launch, providing a direct pathway for those students to improve their health and their outcomes, and for us to be a part of the collective desire to mitigate some of the health disparities that we see are plaguing our community. As a final example of the college's partnership, I'd like to lift the developments on the facilities front. You may have been challenged to find a parking space today. This is a clear connection between student outcomes and the condition of the facilities where they learn. It's important for us to recognize that places and spaces matter. Prince George's Community College is so very thankful for the support of the state of Maryland as well as our Prince George's County government. Yes, yes. thank you. <laughs> Marlboro Hall is a $112 million project that we know will become a pinnacle place of student learning on the campus. It'll be the main academic hub, housing classrooms, laboratories, testing centers, study spaces, and more. The original facility was constructed in 1975, so you can imagine how it had become incompatible with the kinds of immersive learning spaces and innovative spaces that are so critical to students in this present age. Upon completion, Marlboro Hall will be a space that serves not only our students, but also our community. During my tenure here thus far, Prince George's Community College has also made progress in terms of student programs. Our new Sustainable Energy and Workforce Development Program allows county residents to build new skills and advance their careers in solar energy, hybrid and electric vehicles, and construction. This program was offered to students for free during the launch, including tuition and fees, textbooks, training, and the requisite certification. We have been so pleased to provide these services. Nursing and healthcare programs are another area of growth for the college. It is no secret that there is a troubling shortage of healthcare workers in the United States. Thanks to the generous support of the Maryland Senate, nearly $1 million was allocated to our nursing program for fiscal year 2023. 
funding that will allow us to help meet the short and long-term needs for CNA professionals trained and ready to work in Maryland and in the county. Funding that will also provide resources for nursing students and faculty to be exposed to current and emerging technologies that are advancing the industry. We are so very proud to partner with our state in this endeavor. Our progress to date in terms of our people, partnerships, and programs is significant. It signals achievement and movement towards a greater degree of excellence that will build upon the work that has already been accomplished. So let's look toward the future. Dare to be extraordinary. That is the theme of our strategic plan. Guided by six core commitments, our plan responds to the pressing question, how do we set in motion remarkable outcomes that allow PGCC to remain relevant for the next 10, 20, and 30 years? Briefly, let's look at the goals. Enhance equitable access and value for enrolling at PGCC. We're committed to maximizing countywide access for residents to the college's credentials, certificates, and degrees. We'll do this in a manner that increases the likelihood of completion and post-completion success. We have determined that we're not only responsible for our students when they get to us, but that we must partner with our public school system as well as beyond their matriculation with us to their transfer to the university system as well as their pivot into the workforce. Hold us accountable for how they perform. The Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund that I highlighted earlier also represents the kinds of advances that we can build upon under this new strategic plan. We have also not forgotten about the southern part of this county and we have expressly identified the need to ensure that that part of the county has access to the institution for the purpose of participating in our programs. We have not forgotten about the parts of the county that need more workforce development programs. We are absolutely committed to ensuring that we provide comprehensive services that every resident that desires to participate has the opportunity to do so with the fewest number of barriers in place. Goal two, optimize pathways for progression to graduation, transfer, and worker career. We seek to define and redefine our programs and our program pathways to ensure that we reduce the friction that may be occurring that would prohibit students from moving from credentials to certificates into degrees and then into the university. The relevance and value of higher education are being called into question increasingly. It is up to us to tell that story and to make that case. And one of the best ways that we can do that is by elevating student success and their continued advancement. Prospective students and families are asking themselves, is there a real return on investment? Are college degrees and certificates training, are they still relevant? We're committed to resoundingly declaring, yes, they are, and that our degree programs will demonstrate that. We're committed to partnering with our students, the ones who are seeking direction, meaning, the ones who are looking for purpose, the ones who are asking the questions about relevant, relevancy. They are willing to go deeper in their journey. They're willing to go further to find it. And we are committed to being at their side as they, as they do. Goal three, ensure learning and achievement through high impact educational practices. We will continuously design, implement, and scale optimal conditions for improving student success across all modalities. I mentioned earlier the great pivot that happened from in-person learning to many forms of remote learning. It is no secret, we must now evaluate the success of that pivot. We must engage in a process that 
affords us the opportunity to analyze the quality of learning that has occurred. And it may mean we need to make some adjustments because we are responsible for creating the conditions that will afford students the opportunity to be successful. We understand that there have been many pain points, concerns. We understand it is difficult, but we are determined not to shy away because it's difficult. We will continue to work together to navigate through the obstacles that we may encounter. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? Go for. We'll reimagine workforce innovations and partnerships. Through this goal, we will position the college to be recognized as a dynamic collaborative partner for advancing economic mobility for all students. There is power in our partnership. Daring to be extraordinary challenges us to reify our efforts to strengthen and expand our partnerships. It challenges us to work with business and industry to understand how they are adjusting their practice and to recognize it has implications for what we do in the classroom. It challenges us to provide more experiential learning opportunities that will afford students the opportunity to get connected to industry prior to completing their credentials with us so that it might also create that sustained connection as they pursue forms of work and their career. Daring to be extraordinary causes us to ask ourselves and to prompt ourselves to do our very best in our work. It challenges us to look inward first and to make sure that we are locked in on this place of excellence and self-performance that leads to these collective outcomes. What will we contribute individually and collectively that will propel the institution forward? What will it take? That's the question that must be asked and answered. The value of community colleges is vast, but we need to recognize our own value and believe that extraordinary is in fact attainable. It is a mindset. It is a mindset. And you must choose to believe it is possible. The impact of what we do is multi-generational and lifelong. When we equip our students, they uplift their families. When our families are uplifted, they strengthen our communities. When our communities are strong, our potential is boundless. The transformative impact of our work is best illustrated through the stories of our students. I want to introduce you to a recent PGCC graduate whose story of overcoming continues to inspire me daily, reminding me that our work matters and affirming for me I'm in the right place. This student was a student who was attending the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. He was a National Guardsman there. And in the midst of his journey there in 2020, with all of the social unrest, ended up being activated not once, but twice as a Guardsman. After being able to return to school, from these activations. He came to Prince George's Community College, not transferring from UNC to Greensboro, but just decided to take a few classes while he was in the area. Circumstance that provided since his parents had recently come to the area. Student was bright, lots of potential. Like many students, confronted with a major trauma, social unrest, trying to find meaning, what makes sense. The faculty and the staff at this institution poured into this student in such a remarkable way. Things that he had never experienced before 
a personalized touch, a sense of purpose, clear definition of path. Student was a business major at UNC Greensboro in the Bryan School of Business there. Matriculating, doing well. Started on a business path here. But through participation in DMSI, encountered a number of community members who were in a completely different field related to construction and civil engineering. The student decided, I might need to change my major. I'm encountering this robust environment that tells me there is tremendous possibility in another field. The student was encouraged to participate in an internship in this civil engineering and construction through our student affairs office. Participated in this summer internship. Student completed all of their classes, doing remarkably well. Found a sense of purpose. After their academic career being disrupted two consecutive semesters by being activated at UNCG, GPA was plummeting. Comes here, 4.0, 4.0. Transformative environment. Transformative environment. That student found a sense of purpose that extended beyond the challenges that he had encountered, extended beyond opportunities previously considered. Student has technically graduated from Prince George's, was eligible to participate in the ceremony in May, but due to yet another disruption, couldn't be there on that day. Student has since transferred to Morgan State University as a junior <laughs> to continue his studies. I share his story today as a testament of the good that happens even in a short period of time when you believe in the capacity to do what's extraordinary. I share his story today because I am inexpressibly proud of this student. Because he's my son. You see, he hibernated here. Some of you all caught wind of who he was, but many of you didn't. But I want to bear witness today of the power of PGCC. I don't, is he here? Cameron. <laughs> Yes. So, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so this point of personal privilege to present you with your degree from Prince George's Community College, the Associate of Arts and General Studies.
everyone needs a Cameron story. Did I, now I'm gonna let him go, but I, I, I just have to do, now this is a totally a mom moment. It's his birthday today as well. <laughs> I won't, I won't ask you to sing happy birthday. I won't ask you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I know you will. I know you do it. <laughs> if you ask me if I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. That's what Dare to Extraordinary looks like. That is the power, the change, the transformation that rests in this jewel, in this treasure that's called Prince George's Community College. Every student, every resident, every prospective student should have a Cameron outcome. They should be able to come to this place, see us as a partner, and helping them to achieve their goal. To soar to places, levels of success that some may say are unattainable and that others have every reason to expect them to achieve. We are here about learning gains. We are here to meet people wherever they are and to assure them that there is a next level available to them. Vision 2030, dream for a minute. Now I said this and I'll say it again at the beginning of the year. Now if you're gonna be retired, just hold that to yourself. But dream with us for a minute, Vision 2030 where we will be, what we will do. Positions the college to attain remarkable outcomes. You might call it a moonshot. It may be. I don't mind reaching for the moon. You might call them very aggressive, intentionally so because I don't think mediocrity is an option. 2030, college will exceed a 50% post-secondary participation rate for every high school within our service district. Leave no student behind that matriculates through our public schools. 2030, our post, our graduation rate will exceed 60% for all degree-seeking students, regardless of race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status. In this place, the likelihood that a black, brown student from an impoverished neighborhood should be the same as that from the wealthiest zip codes that we know. In this place, that is our aspiration. By 2030, our four-year graduation and transfer rate will exceed 70% for graduates who earn an associate degree. We're committed to them continuing because when we look at lifelong earnings, we recognize the degree and the certifications will still have value. And we don't want any of our students to be left behind. By 2030, 30% of our graduates will complete an associate degree and a bachelor's degree in six years. That means we want more students to maintain the momentum necessary in order to matriculate in a timely fashion and to realize those economic benefits earlier in their lives. By 2030, the college will have enabled 50,000 workers to earn a workforce credential. 
that is aligned to a high-skill, high-wage job. By 2030, the college will establish public and private philanthropic partnerships that will finance at least 1,000 full-time scholarships <laughs> annually. By 2030, the college will have a system of comprehensive campuses and skilled trade centers that provide equitable access to all the residents of Prince George's County. This is our vision. It is the aspiration, and it is attainable. Someone were attempting to describe me. They would likely provide a list of roles. A few, college president, faith leader, wife, mom, first generation college graduate. Those roles bear a signature importance to the extent that they convey places of service and responsibility. But I want you to know my life's work is not bound by the title. It transcends the essence of the title, which is the work of serving and growing people. I'm truly honored to be at the helm of this great institution. And I want you to know it was not about me, and it is not going to be about me. Thank you for this day, the opportunity to be the front face of what is Prince George's Community College. But remember, my leadership is about we rather than me. Hold fast to that, because it will take all of us to achieve the vision. It will take all of us executing our respective responsibilities with integrity, with character, with determination. It will take all of us, as the old folks would say, putting our hands to the plow and pushing until we can't push anymore. This work is more than a moment. The work that I'm entrusted to do, I commit that I will endeavor to do with all of my facility and strength for the time that I'm assigned in this place and space. For the season of my planting, I'm here along with you committed to producing fruit that will endure. Effective leadership is not about power, about the ability to influence and to invest in others so that they feel empowered to do and to be and to become their very best. It is an awakening within other human beings that causes them to stand taller to believe that all things are really possible, to reach higher and to overcome obstacles that one might think are insurmountable. When we grow people, we grow this college. When we grow people, we grow this community. When we grow people, we grow a better world for ourselves and for others to follow. Beloved, elevation awaits. Excellence awaits. Our future awaits. Consider today your invitation to go get it, go get it, and go get it. With all my love, all my respect, and all of my honor, to each of you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. May God bless you all.
thank you, Dr. Williams, for your message. You continue to inspire the entire Prince George's Community College faculty, staff, and students. Because of you, we are daring to be extraordinary as we make a new mark in Prince George's Community County. Now, please welcome Jeremy Perry, an alumnus of Prince George's Community College who will perform Lift Every Voice and Sing by J. Rosamond Johnson. He will be accompanied by Professor Angelina Shumway on piano. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening skies Let it resound loud as the rolling seas a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day be God, let us march on till victory is won. Facing the rising sun of a new day, be God, let us march on till victory is Thank you to Mr. Perry for being part of our installation ceremony. Um, I want to, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I know uh, Chairman Gibson mentioned before that there were several honorees and special guests in the audience, and we would like to recognize uh, those people right now. If you could please, thank you. Uh, if you could please stand when your name. <laughs> 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 Love a good prop master. Um, yeah, if you could please stand uh, when I say your name uh, and be recognized. The Honorable Carolyn J.B. Howard, Maryland State Delegate, District 24. The Honorable Chris Elda Valderrama, Maryland State Delegate, District 26. The Honorable Susie Proctor, Maryland State Delegate, District 27A. The Honorable Diana, uh, Diana M. Fennell, Maryland State Delegate, District 47A. The Honorable Mel Franklin, Council Member at Large, Prince George's County Council. The Honorable Tim Adams, Mayor of Bowie. Montez Anderson, Chair, PGCC Foundation Board, President, Constella Solutions, LLC. 
Jeffrey Franklin, PGCC Foundation Board, Senior Vice President, West Banco. Jeff McFarland, Vice Chair, PGCC Foundation Board, CEO, McFarland Group. Ardania Williams, PGCC Foundation Board, Vice President, Marketing and Business Development, Glendana Construction, LLC. Vernada Williams, PGCC Foundation Board, Owner, Exit First Realty. Dominic Powell, Director, Business Development, Educational Systems Federal Credit Union. Dr. Daria Valentine, Principal, Academy of Health Sciences. If there is any other elected official or community leader who has not been named, please stand so we can recognize you. <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the students, the faculty, staff, administration, and the greater community, thank you all for your contribution to this ceremony. Each of you has made it a special moment for Prince George's Community College. Please join us immediately at the close of the program for a reception in the foyer. Marshals, prepare for the recessional. Audience, please remain seated through the recessional until the music has stopped. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 